Welcome to another edition of the Insider Mailbag. I'm Jared Johnson, and hey, it's a game week edition of the Mailbag as Texas Tech prepares to open the season 7 p.m. Central Time Saturday night against Murray State. It's also, of course, head coach Joey McGuire's debut as the head man on the sidelines for the Red Raiders. So there's a lot of excitement. We're right here on the precipice of kicking off the season. I'm so happy for and uh, we have some really good questions uh, this week from inside the Red Raider subscribers, so I'm going to dive right into them. First one comes from OBX Raider, who says, uh, he says, he wants to know my thoughts uh, early uh, as to the teams in the Big 12 that should be improved and th those that might take a step backwards this season. Yeah, well, I think Baylor, despite, lose, uh, despite winning the Big 12 championship, you know, I, they did lose some pieces. I think they're going to be good. I think they're going to have a quality season, but I they're not my pick to win the Big 12. So that's a step back. I actually have Oklahoma reclaiming the crown, uh, despite you know all the all the changes in terms of the coaching staff uh, with, with Brent Venables taking over. And there is, there are question marks there, but I also think Oklahoma State is strong, and they'll be Oklahoma State a 10 plus win season or a team under Mike Gundy once again. So I think Baylor will take a step back there. Um, I, some other teams that might take a step back. I don't. I have questions about Iowa State. I'm just not sure. Not that they. I mean, they took a step back last year, but I, I don't know if they are, uh, you know, a top tier team in the Big 12. Uh, I don't know if they're even in the middle of the pack this year. They might be. I have a lot of questions about the Cyclones, so we'll have to see uh, where they're at in terms of teams that I think uh, could be better. Well, I think Texas Tech could be better this year, uh, especially, especially in the Big 12. I think they might win more than three games in, uh, in the Big 12. I have them winning four, actually, so that's a, that's a slight, bet, uh, slight bit better. I know people don't like to hear this, River Raider fans don't like to hear this, but I think Texas will probably make a bowl game. I don't think they're as good as uh, some of the predictions that are out there about the Longhorns. I know some people had the Longhorns in their top 25, and I don't see that. Uh, but I do think they are a bowl team. Uh, which they weren't last year, so that will be uh, an improvement. I was impressed by West Virginia. This question was asked before their opener Thursday night in the back uh, backyard brawl. And I, look, I, I know they lost at Pitt. Pitt's a uh, top 20 ranked team, a pretty good team there, and uh, West Virginia was going toe-to-toe, -to -toe, even had a lead in the fourth quarter, and they blew it. But I liked uh, quarterback JT Daniels. I think that's the best quarterback uh, they've had since Will Greer, at least, at West Virginia. So uh, I, I think... Uh, and they still have some pretty salty dudes on defense, So, uh, as we saw Thursday night. So I think West Virginia will be better than they were uh, a season ago. I think Kansas. Uh, now, uh, we're not talking about a team that um, was obviously good or has been good for a long time, but I think Coach Leopold is a good coach, and they might surprise a couple folks in the Big 12 more than just Texas. Uh, as they did last year. So I think Kansas might be slightly better as well. So those are the teams uh, I think could show some improvement this year. Turtle Biscuit Boss wants to know, uh, what's something that the coaches want to or need to figure out in the opener? Well, I know I, I keep harping on this uh, this offseason, but uh, I think just figuring out the rotation at the offensive line. Uh, Mighty Joe and I, and I did a uh, season preview video and also talked about some things we wanted to see in the opener on, on a podcast. Uh, and Joe, you know, mentioned there was some uh, competition still going on, ongoing uh, into the opener that he'd like to see solidified. And I agree with that. I'd like to see somebody claim the kicker spot. I know Coach McGuire said that it could be, it probably will be game to game between Trey Wolf and Gino Garcia, but I wouldn't mind, you know, having one of those guys go ahead and win that competition and have a great season. It's good to have you know somebody else that you know can can get the job done. But still, I'd like to see somebody win that. Um, you know, center and right tackle, like I said, offensive line, so they can you know really focus on cohesion. If they can uh, and right guard, uh, you know, go ahead and say okay, this is these are the guys. You know, not that they can't sub guys in, but I I just want some cohesion up front on the offensive line. And then I think special teams they really need to start building success. Uh, coach Kenny Perry, who also coaches running backs, does a great job. Uh, he's, I've known him for a long time. He's a great coach. Just doesn't matter what it is. He's a great coach. But uh, I, I really hope his special teams unit uh, takes a step forward. Now, they ha they've had good kickers. Um, of course, Garibay was great last year. Austin McNamara is good. But they need to get the return game going where at least they're a threat and opposing teams have to uh, honor them and uh, they start affecting the game that way in the return game. 
GB Jack says, uh, Coach Joey McGuire said all three quarterbacks would play this week. He wants to know my prediction on how much each will play. Yeah, I think some of it will be determined on how the game goes. I know Coach McGuire said he's not just going to play them late, that uh, you know he has packages for all three. He said uh, also said publicly that Donovan Smith's going to play in every game, so that'll be something to watch. And he mentioned he'll be playing – there's some red zone packages for him, so we'll see that. He also mentioned with Barry Morton, he'll bring him in as a change of pace, and they'll really try and utilize uh, his tremendous – and it is – Tremendous ability to uh, throw on the run and some of the arm talent he has in, in that area. So they'll move the pocket some with him as, as again, uh, a kind of change of pace. But in terms of how much I think they'll play, I mean, of course, I think Suck will get, you know, most of the snaps, uh, lead most of the possessions. But I think uh, we'll see probably Donovan Smith at least two or three times in some red zone packages. And Barron will get at least one or two uh, drives. And then, of course, if it's late, they may let one of the young guys go ahead and uh, take it, or both of the, both of Donovan Smith and Baron Morton uh, kind of run the show if Texas Tech's in the driver's seat, as I expect, and uh, Tyler Shuck, uh, you know, gets enough work in. Nas Raider says, with the news, the Big 12 has reopened media rights negotiations with ESPN and Fox. He says, what do I think this means in terms of the better deal expansion? I think it's good news overall. Now, part of me wants Texas Tech to get away from uh, in the Big 12, to get away from uh, ESPN, just because of the way they've uh, negotiated things. And I, I feel like ESPN doesn't really prioritize the Big 12 as it should, you know, minus OU in Texas, as I believe it should. But uh, there's a need for ESPN to fill some slots, obviously. Um, the Big 12, the what we're going to see with the, the four editions that have already been announced, and then perhaps even like the Arizonas, Utahs, Colorados, Arizona State, and whoever else, um, that might get added. It, it shows that the Big 12 has definitely taken a huge step uh, from a season ago. They are uh, viable. Um, there is going to be a future for the conference. That's it's an inclination that that is is the case. What we've been thinking, which is good. That's that's a good sign in my opinion. Now and also they wouldn't have announced this wouldn't have gotten out if there weren't uh, if both sides weren't interested. If, if that makes sense, or all sides weren't weren't interested. Uh, in, in this happening. So that's that's all good news, I think, in terms of the future viability of the Big 12. Tech Freak wants to know who I think will be the top receiver and the top running back. Well, running back's difficult because it's going to, you know, Taj Brook and Sir Roger Thompson, in my opinion, they're both starters. They're very good players. They're two of the best players on the team, proven veterans, all that. I think they could have their best seasons. Now, I'll just say whoever is the healthiest between those two will have will will lead the team in rushing and rushing touchdowns. Now, in terms of a receiver, the smart money goes on Miles Price. He's a known quantity. He's a slot receiver. I think he's going to get a lot of passes. But uh, the two guys outside to keep an eye on are Jaram Bradley and Loic Fungi. Uh, they're both big. Bradley's 6'5", 215, and he's looked very athletic, very good. And he is the starter. He's one of the main guys there outside at X, I believe. And then at Z, Loic Fungi is 6'4", 220, and can really run. One of the faster guys on the team. Uh, was a former four-star guy. He's healthy. Those, those two big, athletic, fast, especially Fungi, uh, receivers are going to get a lot of opportunities. So they're, they're two guys to watch. But I think Miles Price... He's poised for a monster year, so that's who I'm going to put my money on. Roars wants to know, what underclassmen do I see getting significant snaps this season? Well, you know, of course, Coy Aiken was already mentioned, the receiver from Stephenville, true freshman. I think he's going to get some time not only at receiver, but in the return game as well. Maybe on some covered units. Uh, he's 6'2", 200 pounds, but he looks so much bigger. He's really physical when he goes for, after the ball in the air. He plays, definitely doesn't play like a true freshman. Uh, so I really like him. Uh, some other guys. Well, I already mentioned Bradley. He's a redshirt freshman, so that's somebody to keep an eye on. Um, Amarian Banks on the defensive line, another redshirt freshman. Uh, somebody to keep an eye on. Jacoby Jackson is a redshirt freshman at guard. Coach McGuire said he's going to uh, be a swing guard, play both left and right guard. He is going to play some. He might even take a uh, starting guard, guard spot. We'll just have to see how it plays out. Um, but... I, I think those are the main ones that, that come to mind. Uh, Bryson Donnell, he was listed in the depth chart as the third running back. Uh, I really like him. I, know, I really feel like he's ready to go. But Cameron Valdez um, is the third running back. He's just out this week and probably next week at least uh, with a strained knee. So, But Donnell's going to get some opportunities Saturday night for sure. 
So there's some guys on defense, Ty Kana, uh, true freshman inside linebacker out of Katy. I know they really like him. I think he's second on the depth chart at uh, one of the inside linebacker spots. Uh, Joseph Adadiri, um, I think he's 6'4", 270 pound defensive end. He was listed in the two deep and Coach McGuire raves about him and loves him and you just watch his clips from Mansfield Summit in high school, you see why. He's a coveted uh, edge rusher. So I, I really like him. I'm trying to think about who else in terms of freshmen. I don't know if you're counting sophomores, on, sophomores as underclassmen, but uh, there's some redshirt freshmen and, and true freshmen. They're all those guys. I think they're going to play a lot this year. I really do. Raider Fano wants to know, which side of the ball, offense or defense, has the highest potential for a breakout season? Well, man, I think, again, if you're a gambling man, you'd have to go with the offense, just historically in Texas Tech. <clears throat> but then the way we watch in terms of people who have followed Texas Tech for a long time, we're so much harsher on the offense than the defense because the expectations are so much higher. So, And I think this defense has the potential to be good. I'm not saying great, but I think it – could be good. It could be really. It could be solid, which would be very good for most Tech fans compared to especially recent history. So I'm going to go with the defense. They have the most room for improvement over the last several seasons, or what we're used to. Uh, who's going to be ranked higher? I mean, I think the offense is going to under Zach Kittley and his style air raid offense. But in terms of the eye test and how we feel, like man, this this unit really came a long way from you know from last year or the years before, I think it'd be the defense. TTU Dad 2012 says, Coach McGuire said on his radio show that he reads the boards but never comments. Are you able to say he reads the VIP? I have never talked with Coach McGuire about if he's on our board or not. But, um, And I'm not like supposed to just contact him without going through the proper channels, of course, um, or you know interact with him, which, of course, all that happens with people who do what I do. And the powers that be understand that. Um, but the best way to say it, and the most honest way to say it is, um, I know for a fact that people within the athletic department and the, the, on the football program have, uh, VIP accounts. Um, several of them comment on some of the stories I write, like there's uh, several of them like the fall camp, um, uh, reports and notebooks I was doing. I actually had a former coach who still keeps his eye on what happens with Texas Tech uh, hit me up randomly in the middle of fall camp. And, and you, normally if you get a call from a coach out of the blue, it's not good news really. You know, not always, but uh, they'll just hit you up. They'll just, you know, DM you and say, hey, this, this or that, or could you help us with this, or this is what I, you know, how information I have for you, whatever. But to call you out of the blue, um, you're like, oh, what is this going to be? And But it was highly complimentary of, of me and the staff and saying, like, we're, you know, basically we know our stuff. And without being in the, in the meeting rooms, we're about as honored as we could be. So, yeah, I, I feel really good about it. And uh, I, I'm not surprised that Coach McGuire is on, on Texas Tech message boards. I mean, look how he is on Twitter. I don't know where he finds the time for all of it, but uh, – the man is relentless. You see, I don't think he sleeps. <laughs> so uh, I'm not surprised at all. And I know for a fact that coaches and players, not as much players, but their parents are on our boards watching. A lot more people than, and, you know, they want to remain remain anonymous. If they announce themselves, then that's one thing. But, uh, yeah, since I've been here, and definitely now, um, there have been a lot of people in and around the program uh, that, are, that are on the board. Raider Power 81 says, which QB will have a better year? TJ Finley at Auburn, Bo Nix at Oregon, or Tyler Shuck at Texas Tech? I guess I'm going to go full homer here and go Shuck. Uh, you know, Bo Nix, up and down in his career at Auburn, um, I think he was a little better last year. Uh, so I don't even know, is he definitely starting at Oregon? And that may have been announced since the last time I looked at it. Um, so we'll have to see. Oregon has some options. Now, I know T.J. Finley was announced as a starter at Auburn, and that dude is a beast. What, 6'7", 240? Um, but he's had mixed results as well. Uh, they lost several games down the stretch last year so when uh, he was a starter. So, uh, I, you know, Shuck, I feel like, um, you look at his record, his success, his stats, uh, by all his metrics, I, I think I have to pick Tyler Shuck. So... But, man, these were some great questions. You can definitely tell it's game week. I had a lot more questions this week and really good ones. Uh, so, But for now, that's going to be it. I really appreciate you watching, and until next time.